Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good day. Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your agriculture update for this Thursday, the 17th of August, 2017, just after 2.35 p.m. Central Daylight Time. First, my heart goes out to everyone in Spain. In fact, all of us it goes out to. Uh, terrorist attacks like this aren't necessary. They prove nothing other than there's terrorists out there. But in a nutshell, the stock market getting hit a run to the metal markets, the dollar fairly stable as we're getting a bit of a sell-off in a number of uh, foreign currencies at this hour. In the grain markets, and that's what this update is about, we've got corn lower, wheat lower. Beans had a rally, but they're into resistance up at these areas. We'll see if they can hold on or not. Cotton, for the first time in a while, has had actually an update. And the sugar market, well, got back down to that 1292 level. It's actually a double bottom zone, and the market spun back up from there. So we'll see what goes on in that market. Now, as we take a look at the bean chart, you're down for the week five cents. You could actually have an up week. It wouldn't surprise me. You're only a nickel away from doing that on the last trading day. And that brings me up. Tomorrow, the odds are I'm not going to be doing any of these videos. I'm going to probably take a personal day for myself, uh, which is with summer coming, I take so few days, I want to get that done. So uh, my family's bothering me, so it might be tomorrow, so don't look for a weekend update necessarily. What I might do is if I have time, maybe I'll run in the office and do one of these. So look for them, but I can't promise they're going to come out. In the November soybeans on a daily area chart of closes, the market has gone from 1043 down to 924 and a quarter and came back today this uh, seven and three quarters up to that 933 level. You can see how the market has gone all the way down, breaking overall $1.26. Now at some point you're due for a bounce, but that's all it is right now. The fundamentals are purely in the bear camp. The question is, where's the value area? The last break low was really around 907 back in this time frame of June. So we'll see if the market's able to get back down there or not after a bounce. And what this bounce could set up is we have a pattern of a higher high than a lower low. We're able to get from this wherever the market ends up a high that starts failing again and get that pattern of lower highs and lower lows. You're far away from key averages. You'd have to rally from here another roughly 30 cents to get to the 100-day average and a bit more than that to the 18. And as I told you, I think these moving averages could get what's called a bearish crossover where the 18 gets under the 100. And believe me, moving average traders, they look at that. Doesn't mean they can force the market lower, but they'll look at it and that's another bear signal. In terms of Bollinger Bands, well, you got down to it way back here. Haven't hit it since then, and you're climbing back up ever so slightly. But momentum is locked in, and as long as it stays locked in, on rallies like today, and if you get a further one tomorrow, expect to see fresh short selling until you lose that red line. In other words, it would have to close over 20, and given it's got a reading of 9, I don't see that happening right away. The meal market is just like the soybean market, but more bearish. It's got the pattern of lower highs, lower lows. So now you're getting a bounce in a market with an embedded reading. You've had the bearish crossover. This market's actually, technically speaking, ahead of the soybeans, and definitely a more bearish chart. If the market can bust through this 297.40, the next objective might be that lower Bollinger Band. As we come to soybean oil, as has been the case, I think the traders are buying oil, selling meal, and you found great support yesterday at the combination of the 100-day average and the lower Bollinger Band. You are oversold. You do not have a trend. You have a, lower, a higher high, a lower low, and then you had a vertical price break that found support, and you're getting a bounce away from it. In the cotton market, you're just bouncing against the Bollinger Band, and now even with today's uh, I'm sorry, that's corn. Even with today's uh, close, you're back under that number. So you were under it today. If we go to yesterday, the market closed at 66 and a half, and that was literally right on this uh, Bollinger Band uh, number. So I'm just going to say today's the first day under it and leave it at that. 
in the wheat market under the lower Bollinger Band two days in a row. Embedded reading, notice the pattern here, lower highs, lower lows, a bearish crossover occurred here, prices dropping. I mean, I cannot tell you where the market finds its bottom. I can tell you this. Two days under the lower Bollinger Band going into especially a weekend, you got a 3% chance of staying under that lower band tomorrow. In other words, 97% that it'll move to the right-hand side in some manner. In the sugar market, an embedded reading. Grain after grain, bearish. And this, you know, while it's not necessarily a grain per se, it's in that family. Lower highs, lower lows, embedded reading, everything bearish on this chart. Coffee market, lower highs, lower lows, riding the lower Bollinger Band, but very oversold. First day under the lower Bollinger Band, certainly ripe for at any point a bounce to the right-hand side of it, but trend down. Cocoa, trend down, oversold. That's the common thing we have. You're either embedded or oversold in all these markets. Lower highs, lower lows, finally move to the right-hand side. Now, yesterday, I pointed this out. You had two days in a row under the lower Bollinger Band. It gave today a 3% chance of the market closing again under it, and you move to the right. That's all it has to do. Now the, it's still very much in its downtrend, admittedly oversold, and you might get a bearish crossover where the 18 gets over underneath, rather, the 100. That, again, is bearish. In the cotton market, the market is gradually running out of big range and momentum. Doesn't mean it can't go lower, but no longer the thrusts like you had. Each one's gotten shorter and the day's ranges are getting uh, shorter also. Into oversold territory, my guess is the pros will let the market bounce and then see what they want to do with it. In the cattle market, my eye goes right here, oversold. Second part, you're under the 18-day average downside bias, but you don't have a trend. You got a higher high and a lower low. What do you want to do? Sell it short down here to get to the 105 level, the lower Bollinger Band? I don't know. I don't know if it's the greatest percentage trade for sure. In the feeder cattle, this one at least I can tell you is bearish. You've got the lower highs. You got the lower lows. The market is on target to challenge the lower Bollinger Band, but it is oversold. And last in the hogs, they failed yesterday and more follow through back under the 18 day average. You do realize this market has dropped from 71.32 yesterday to a low today of 66.42. Pretty violent trade back under the 18 day average. And notice how the 18 and the uh, 100 day average are just about at the same numbers. Momentum down, bias down, but no trend. And trying to catch V moves like that, God bless you if you can do it, but most people can't, including me. In summing it up, look at the stock market down pretty hard. Now, I want to remind you about our research because you won't get this elsewhere. Let me explain something to you. There's great discount firms out there, fabulous ones. You can get your rates really down. Of course, when you pick up a phone, can you send me something? Nobody picks it up. You want in-house research? They don't have research teams typically. What they've got is they're providing you everything they can to make the trading experience fine, but they don't want to be into the research business, the news business, whatever. They'll go to third-party vendors. We don't. We write. We have staffs that write on everything for our clients. That's why they come to us. They're not looking for a rehash. They're looking for a fresh hash. They want to know what's going on on the floors. What do we think? Where's the different markets? To get access and see what we're about, and that's the whole thing. We'd like you to see what we're about. We'll give you two weeks access to this, 10 business days. Why not take a look and see if this fits your needs? You need not take all these categories. Pick the ones you want. Our brokers will pop them off. All this information shows right up in your email box. What I know is you're not going to get this elsewhere, and that's the beauty of what we do. So how do you get it? You give us a phone call at 866-973-2077. You can go to our website, www.iverapstein.com. You'll see a carousel of free offers. You can choose from that and just click on one. The forms will appear. You can click up here. If you're watching me on YouTube, you'll see an icon. Click on that. Or underneath us on a number of websites, it says click here for Ira's free information. There's free offerings. Do so. Choose what you want. We'll get it to you. I'm I Rapstein. Remember, I may not be doing this for this weekend. The very worst that happens, I'll see you on Monday, but maybe over the weekend I'll sneak in and do some of these as a surprise.
It's up to you to look for them. I'm Ira Epstein. Have a great day.